yeah we back now today i got a special video man i got a special video for those of y'all who love history like me who are students of history just like me now a lot of y'all are new here but in case you didn't know i built my channel mainly off talking about the haitian revolution right but the way that i discussed it was unique because it wasn't in the typical european narrative fashion that we are used to right i came with a lot of stories that have been buried and erased out of the historical text i pulled up historical documents that many of y'all have never seen you know what i'm saying straight from 200 years ago and i corrected a lot of the false narratives that were put out and disseminated by the europeans right and i compiled it in a nice neat package right in my playlist section listen knock yourself out dive in deep man dive in deep a lot of beautiful information all up in my playlist now for many of y'all who already know and been following my channel for a very long time my favorite historical figure i mean besides desaline yes the second i would say right next to desaline would be king henry christoph i call him the most powerful black man of the last 500 years because you tell me another black man who died as a billionaire inside his own palace with his own standing army a black man who faced the europeans head on defeated them and died on top as a multi-billionaire inside his own palace that he had built one of the very few political figures who were never defeated by the europeans who were never conquered by the europeans never touched never got his life taken died on top and for that he was erased out of the historical record now me i call myself the leading historian on king henry christoph right i'm the self-proclaimed i gave myself the title i gave myself the championship belt i gave myself the crown right because i can honestly say with complete confidence that anything that you find on king henry christoph that does not match the information that i bring directly to you that is backed by historical documents and written text that were written from the time i'm pulling up documents written from the time i'm pulling up letters written by people who lived during that time i'm pulling up news articles from that time like i'm coming with the documents that have been erased from the historical text directly you know you know what i mean so listen you gotta come to me i'm the leading historian on king henry christoph forget anything that you see on the web if it does not match what i'm coming with so i would i would implore any black man who's seeking some inspiration to understand that anything that you want to accomplish is possible man go to my playlist section knock yourself out start with the playlist that is called the most powerful black man of the last 500 years and then once you're done with that then you can head over to the next playlist entitled history of haiti i call it an audio book but yeah man knock yourself out history of haiti it's like 50 videos up in there and some of them are like damn near two hours long an hour and a half long like some of them are really long so a lot of information was dropped in them videos and that was really how i built a book on my channel and besides the fact that i want to give black men inspiration motivation things like that i put out this content specifically for my haitian people to understand listen you got to know who the hell you are you got to know who the hell you are most of y'all don't know who the hell y'all are y'all don't know who the hell y'all forefathers were because if you did you would understand that you got some massive shoes to fill you know what i'm saying and you got to stop playing around you know what i'm saying so i pull out i put out a lot of this content for my folks but really for the for the broader global black society to understand that these are all of our ancestors right these are all of our ancestors it's not just just not just the ancestors of the haitian people these are all of our ancestors for real that's how they seen it right they were pan-africanists in the sense that a lot of tribal boundaries a lot of cultural boundaries that were broken during the haitian revolutionary years it was all about we black men we black women right another thing too the reason why i spent so much time focused on resurrecting the legacy of king henry christoph is because not only was he written out of the historical text but they make it seem like during his years of power that haiti was going through struggles right haiti was under embargo haiti was haiti was starving right and to be honest you wouldn't believe it but yes yes it's the facts during those years it was actually haiti's most prosperous years the years directly after the revolution up until about 1825 1825 was around the time that as we know the mulatto boys got into power and they sold the country away to their fathers and their uncles and they you know what i'm saying their, their elders and things like that yeah the sons of the french they got into power and they sold the country away that that is where that debt came from where haiti had to pay that debt of so many billions of dollars that was because the sons of the french they sold the country away but before that year 1825 from 1804 to 1825 king henry christophe was in power from 1806 to 1820 a large segment of time that whole time he was in power during what was called the kingdom of haiti that was haiti's most prosperous years you got to understand when haitians inherited the richest colony on the planet we didn't, it's not like we just stopped working it's not like we just you know what i'm saying put all our garden tools down and just you know we, we just started partying no nah, bro no nah, no nah. we continue to maintain the production we continue to maintain the cultivation of the fields we continue to maintain the production of all these things that the world was demanding from the colony right as you know a, a good amount of all the goods coming out of the colony were being sent all around the world right it was a major it was a major hot spot 
right for a lot of goods that were needed all across the planet so you don't think that we just bro we didn't stop working man we didn't stop working we yeah we kept getting that bread we kept getting that bread and in fact if you want more information like i said go to my playlist section knock yourself out man knock yourself out throw it on the tv screen and then just watch it like a netflix series man i know you're gonna love it i know you're gonna love it for all of y'all who the new subscribers yeah and you and you a history buff like me you really deep into history you're a student of history and you want to understand what black men and black women did during the Haitian revolution every years in a very in-depth Depth explanation and analysis that you will never get anywhere else go to my playlist section knock yourself out now in this video man as you know i'm pulling up the historical text i came through i came through with an actual article written in the royal gazette of haiti the royal gazette of haiti was actually the actual media the media the publication from the kingdom of haiti during king henry christoph's reign this came this is coming directly from the haitian government this is the national newspaper of the time this is an article from the 4th of january 1814 right 1814 am i correct yes the 5th of january 1814 five days after independence independence day in haiti is january 1st so as you know it just passed for us two weeks ago and i think it's suitable and i think it would be a dope story and i think a lot of y'all would like to hear it man so we're gonna we're gonna talk about how did the king of haiti how did king henry christoph celebrate independence day back in 1814 right as you know this was published a week after so this is basically like the national newspaper giving a rundown of the festivities it got some speeches it got man listen we're gonna run we're gonna, we gonna get into it man we're gonna get into it listen this is the type of information i got on my channel i'm coming with the exclusive historical documents directly from the historical text that they erased listen we got it official we don't play with me you know what I'm saying don't play with me now let's get into it man let's get into it now we actually got a quick summary before we jump into the official documents now i do not know why the source is the national library of ireland i don't know how the irish ended up with you know copies of ha haiti's royal gazette from 1814 i don't know man but that's how it goes man you'll find a lot of haitian documents a lot of artifacts from that time a lot of you know crazy things that could be sold for millions of dollars just floating all over the place bro some some of them are in washington some of them is in london you know we got whole entire bro it's crazy bro you, you know we got documents out in ireland you know it's it's wild and you know and you know in france i mean they got a whole bunch of stuff locked in the damn archive so to be honest it's a mess but let's jump in to the summary one of the largest issues one of the longest issues in our collection clocking in at eight pages the first of the la gazette to appear in 1814 continues the long tradition of describing the festivities involved in celebrating haitian independence day the commemoration of the 11th year of haitian independence began with the usual speeches spoken in front of a huge crowd in the city of Sousi, the future site of the king's new palace in addition to christoph the queen the prince and the princesses were all in attendance bound de Vasti, who i should say pronounce it bound de Vate, gave a speech on the king's behalf in which he declared the founding of a monarchy has opened our hearts once again to hope and foretells for Haitians a new and more glorious destiny. Now, before we jump into it, man, I'm going to tell you right now, bound if I see wherever he's at, wherever he's at, Christoph, wherever he's at, I'm telling you, Christoph would be, Christoph would be furious, bro. If you wouldn't understand the wrath that Christoph would bring upon us if he came back to power, bro, do you know what would happen? Do you know what would happen? Oh my God, bro. So many of y'all, so many of y'all would be sent to the afterlife. It would, it, bro, I'm telling you, so many of y'all would be sent to the afterlife if Christoph came back from the dead and he was back in power. So many of y'all would be gone, man. So many of y'all would be gone and y'all would be calling him a dictator. You know what I'm saying? Y'all would have him on CNN. Y'all would have him on MSNBC. Bro, y'all would have him on, on Vice Media. Man, y'all would be slandering Christoph if he came back. But listen, we need him back. We need him back because, man, listen. Anyways, let's jump right into it, man. Let's jump right into it. Let, let me keep my spirits up. I don't want to get depressed. The article starts out, Kingdom of Haiti, Independence Day. From Sun Tzu on January 4th, 1814. Sun which illuminates with your immortal rays the 11th anniversary of our independence. You who come every year to electrify our souls with dear and glorious memories. Hail, God of the universe, who pours out on us your precious favors. Beautiful day of independence. Day of joy and glory for the Haitians. Hello, this glorious feast, always awaited with new impatience by the people, was celebrated this year with still more pomp and magnificence than usual. The king our most august and beloved sovereign having wished that a feast so dear to his people and to his heart be celebrated with all possible pomp had consequently spread his liberalities in all the provinces and districts of the kingdom we deeply regret that the limits of this gazette do not allow us to insert all the speeches that have been made and to be able to give our readers an exact description of the festivities that took place in our provinces our pen would lack eloquence to portray the spirit of enthusiasm the love of country and freedom that drive haitians on such a great day that is independence we will confine ourselves to giving the description of this feast as it took place at Sun 
the ordinary residents of the court and we are going to transcribe the speeches that were pronounced in this solemnity now listen time out time out time out time out time out now as i said before keep in mind remember how the europeans always said that oh haiti was under embargo after after independence i always say and i always ask if that was the case then where did king henry christoph get the money to build that palace to build the citadel the largest military fortress in the world the palace was like the palace of versailles in the caribbean how did he have billions of dollars tucked away when he passed away how did he have the resources to throw on these large national festivities for the whole country right like he said each year the festivities get more and more magnificent and more and more pomp because the kingdom was was amassing more wealth and more wealth and more wealth and, and selling more product now listen yes we were under embargo by the united states but guess what yeah uh, britain didn't have that embargo on us nah man nah them british them british ships that was pulling up to the docks them british ships that was pulling up to the docks yeah the emperor of russia yeah he was cool with Kristoff. the emperor of russia showed love to Kristoff. in fact i actually read a letter from the actually a letter that Kristoff wrote to the emperor of russia like i said go to my playlist section the most powerful black man of the last 500 years go check that out man go check that out dive in deep learn some real history that they don't want to teach you about learn what black men did recently in the past couple centuries and know that nothing that we want to do is impossible during this time around the mid 1810s king henry christoph was the richest most powerful black man walking the face of the planet earth and he had a standing army of 50,000 men of 50,000 men armed and ready and well clothed and well fed and during his time on the throne the europeans did not send one ship didn't even blow one shot in his direction and it was a reason for that and that's why we should we should praise that man we should honor that man we should show respect to that man for doing what hasn't been done since he walked the planet man ain't been a ain't been a black man that did it as big as king henry christoph ever since he was on the planet man but anyways let's jump back into the article let's go let's go the king's speech addressed to the dignitaries of the kingdom assembled in his majesty's palace struck us deeply this great king this father of the country has condescended to make a brief account of the present situation of the kingdom the progressive march of events the remarkable which illustrates the splendors of our history and which have particularly influenced the moral and national character of the haitian people the causes and effects which have led to the restoration of things have been traced with fidelity with this spirit of wisdom and humility which characterizes the acts of his majesty's cabinet the truth of the pictures the benefits we enjoy the liberal intentions the paternal expressions which his majesty has used must have penetrated the dignitaries of the liveliest emotion Happy the nation which possesses a great man whose genius and power are consecrated only to make it happy. Now, time out, time out, time out. Keep in mind the grammar might be a little off sometimes because it's a translation from French to English. So, you know, sometimes hey, it is what it is. Follow me, man. But anyways, let's jump right back into the article. The city of Sanssouci was filled with the great influx of people. Most of the inhabitants of the capital, nobles, townspeople and foreigners, the farmers of the surrounding parishes had flocked to Sanssouci to celebrate this festivity. The five support corps of the troops of the military household of the king, the different corps which compose the garrison of the city, the corps of worksmen of all the estates further increased the competition and added to the beauty and variety of the event tables were set up under arbors intended for the troops and for the people who were to attend this festivity which lasted for two days oh yeah time out time out time out oh yeah by the way when when, when christoph threw a party when christoph threw a party it was not going to be like okay we're going to link up at seven o'clock tonight and then we're going to leave at like two in the morning when christoph threw a party it would be like all right bro link up at like monday evening around five and we're going to party to like next monday <laughs> Bro, I'm not playing. In fact, like I said, go to my playlist section. The most powerful black man of the last 500 years. When Christoph was coronated during his coronation ceremony, after he was declared king officially, right? Head of state, you know what I'm saying? Boss status. The festivities lasted, I believe it was for like, it had to be at least a week. It was like a week, 11 days, five days. It was some crazy amount of time. It wasn't just one day, bro. I'm talking about people were falling asleep on the palace lawn. You know what I'm saying? People were falling asleep just all over the place. Like Christoph he did not party for one day if we partying now nah, we're we gonna party all night then we're gonna fall asleep wherever we fall asleep at you know what i'm saying we're gonna fall asleep you know what i'm saying in the damn church or something we're gonna fall asleep in the damn palace on the, on the damn lawn on the steps and then we're gonna wake up and then we're gonna party some more you know what i'm saying then we're gonna party some more we're gonna have breakfast and party in the morning you know what i'm saying and then we're gonna start drinking in, in the goddamn afternoon and it's like bro christoph was not an ordinary dude so yes i'm not surprised when it says the festivities lasted for two days straight yeah christoph yeah yeah party 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 you know what i'm saying you, listen he loved to live life bro he loved to live life like i said he was the flashiest out of all the out of all the generals right 
Two Cent the Virtue or Dessaline, very humble, you know what I'm saying? Very humble, just modest type of dudes. But Christoph, like I said, built like one of the biggest palaces we ever seen, the largest military fortress the world has ever seen. The Citadel up in the damn mountain, 3,000 feet up in the sky, overlooking the damn Caribbean Sea. Like he was a big, larger than life character, bro. Larger than life character. So, of course, like, yeah, he loved to party. Yeah, he loved to party. But at the same time, Christoph was about his business at the highest level. He was the definition of work hard, play hard, work hard, play hard, and grab your shotgun and ride down on the enemy if he tried to disrespect you and then come back and play hard and work hard some more you know what i'm saying so yeah let's jump back into the article the day before at sunset and the next day at the first ray of dawn salvos of artillery greeted the beautiful day of independence at eight o'clock the assembled dignitaries proceeded into a body into his majesty's palace where they were introduced by the grand master of ceremonies into the hall of dignitaries and ranged according to the order of precedence a moment later the king appeared with the queen the prince royal and the princesses at his side now in the next section of the article we are actually going into speeches that were read out speeches that were read out during the independence day of 1814 january 1st the first speech is coming from the Comte de saint louis to be honest i've never heard of this gentleman ever and like i said i've been studying haitian history for a long time but like i said there's a lot of names that obviously didn't make the historical text because a lot of them were just ordinary people you know what i'm saying everybody ain't gonna be you know what i'm saying up in the history book so i've never heard of this guy named Comte de saint louis and i know a lot i know a lot of members from the kingdom of haiti back then i studied this so this is the first time i've ever i've ever heard of this guy but obviously he was of some importance because he had his speech published in the national newspaper in 1814 so let's get into it this is what he said sir the star of the day after having traversed its celestial career brings back the anniversary of the glorious and immortal independence day of the happy children of haiti 10 years have already passed and the 11th is preparing its course for the happiness of haitians by making ourselves independent we have repelled all foreign domination we have constituted ourselves into a body of nation and we have taken our place in the rank of free peoples but it was not enough to be independent there was still a lot to do the scattered materials of the buildings required the assistance of a skillful architect who knew how to discern them with choice and the maturity of time to bring the work to its perfection the passions which the effervescence of things had exalted demanded a great man who by the force of his genius would take away from them what was exaggerated in them and make their enthusiasm even serve the public good finally founded the reign of laws in the place of the chaos in which the nation was plunged after fluctuations uncertainties your majesty appeared the haitians glimpsed the dawn of a new era sir this cherished anniversary brings together around your majesty your dignitaries, your officers, your subjects, the first thought of the people of the kingdom is at this moment, devoted to the memory of independence and to your majesty. In the midst of the thanksgiving that this generous people addresses to the most high, rises the offering of love and veneration, which is so justly due to you. For us to whom each year inspires the renewal of our duties and as the testimonies of our gratitude and our gratitude, it is sweet for us to be the first to make our feelings burst out and to give you the first of them, proofs. We strongly feel the benefits with which your majesty has deigned to bestow upon us. We who are invested with the confidence of your majesty must strive tirelessly to make ourselves more and more worthy of it. By fulfilling our duties towards our beloved sovereign, towards our country, towards our fellow citizens, we come to deposit at your feet, sir, our wishes, the homage of our deepest respect. We pray the divinity to bestow on your precious days his most abundant gifts and blessings to preserve your majesty for the happiness of your good people, for the happiness of our august and virtuous sovereign, for our dear Prince Royal and your dear children. Let your majesty's personal satisfaction be at its height. May he always transmit to us the examples of virtue and generosity, which are the lot of great souls and with which your majesty has been so advantageously endowed by nature because we know it, sir, and all the Haitian people have the intimate conviction of it. It was reserved only for your genius to create our civil institutions, to maintain the harmony which exists between all citizens, to establish this discipline, this force and guarantee of the state. It was, it was reserved for you alone to make the happiness of this loyal and sensitive people whom you cherish and who you carry in your heart by the appreciation of crowds, the great things that your majesty has done in their favor and whose story would be imperfect. We swear to support the independence of the kingdom, to devote ourselves to the support of the throne, to the defense of the king, the queen, the prince royal and the royal family, and to maintain the sublime institutions of the monarchy. Long live independence. Long live the king. Long live the queen. Long live the prince royal. Long live the royal family. Now, time out. That was the end of the speech by Comte de Saint Louis. You know, I never heard of the brother, never heard of him. But listen, he just gave Christoph his flowers, man. He just gave Christoph his flowers, man. Hey, black man, how come we can't show each other love like that in the present day, man? You saw how that black man showed love to that other black man. No ego, no nothing. Just showed him his gratitude. Like, yo, bro, I love you, man. 
I love you for everything we accomplished. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so blessed. Look how we living, bro. Everything that you, everything that you mapped out. Look how we living, bro. It came to light. It came to light, bro. It came to light. You know what I'm saying? How come black men cannot do like our forefathers and show love to each other like that? In the present day, bro, it would have been so much jealousy. Are you kidding me, bro? It would have been so much jealousy because, like I said, Christoph was the the richest, most powerful black man walking the face of the earth. And he was born a slave just like them just like well not everybody was born a slave we had a small population that was you know what i'm saying doing a thing already free but yeah he was a, he was born a slave just like them you know what i'm saying so man black man would have been jealous trying to take take off his head black man would never show love to another black man like that in the present day man unfortunately but you know hey learn from our forefathers man that's why i show love to my brothers bro that's why i show love to my brothers every chance i get man love y'all boys man love y'all you my brother man if you're a black man you my brother you know what I'm saying unless you show to me that you are not my brother then you know what I'm saying then it's F you but I give y'all the benefit of the doubt until y'all cross me but I love my brothers you know what I'm saying I love my brothers now let's get back into the article Christoph welcomed the speech of the dignitaries with kindness and testified to them how much he was satisfied to see them gathered around this person and how much he was penetrated by the sentiments which animated the dignitaries for the prosperity of the kingdom, for his particular happiness, and for that of his royal family. After returning aloud to a few details of the circumstances with which united the dignitaries, he ordered Baron de Vasti, his secretary, to reply with the following speech. Now, this is the speech of Baron de Vasti. Now, also in my playlist section, I have an actual book written by Baron de Vasti. It's not the whole entire thing, right? I still got to come with some more, um, some more parts to it, right? It's not finished. I got like six parts on that playlist. Baron de Vasti. The secretary to the king, right? The king's right hand man. He's about to give this speech. We're about to read the speech. But I actually read a book that he wrote about his memoirs during the Haitian Revolution, right? His autobiographical account of what happened during the years of the Haitian Revolutionary War. Go check that out. But in this video, we're about to get into his speech. And let's hear what Bound of Vasti said. You know what I'm saying? This is my boy. You know what I'm saying? Big mulatto chief. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Bound of Vasti. Yeah, he he was one of the mulattoes. Like I said, he was a mulatto that viewed himself as a black man. He wasn't like the other mulattoes that viewed themselves as, you know what I'm saying? I'm Mr. Frenchy Frenchy, Mr. Monsieur. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah he, he, yeah, he viewed himself as a black man. You know what I'm saying? He did not look to France as the, as the mother country. None of that. He was a real black man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, his father was white, but he was a real black man. And he was such a real dude that he was the right hand man to the king. And Christoph, like, I said Christoph was a gangster. So if you if you Christoph's right hand man and we know Christoph is a gangster, you already know Bound of Asti, he a gangster. Now let's get into it, man. We're about to jump into the speech of Bound of Asti delivered January 1st, 1814. Man, this is some legendary stuff we read now for the free, man. For the free. I'm just giving it to the people, man. Legendary stuff. Black men showing black men love, man. Black men camaraderie. Black women up in the building looking good. You know the women, you know the women was looking good, man. You know the women was dripping. You know what I'm saying, dripping in diamonds, all that. You know the brothers, the brothers had they, the brothers had their military suits on with the shotguns on deck. You know what I'm saying, with the swords on their hip. You already know. You know what I'm saying. So let's jump into the speech. Bound of Asti. Let's go, gentlemen. You come here to celebrate the glorious and immortal era of independence. You come in the outpouring of your hearts to deposit at the feet of the throne the memory of the brilliant actions and the generous feelings which animated us during this glorious event. You have just sworn by hand to maintain the independence and the constitution of the kingdom. Your king shares your vows and accepts your oaths. Enough and too long, the genius of the Haitian people could not soar by breaking the shackles which held it captive. Enough and too long, the love of country, that generous passion which exalts the soul and inspires it in heroic virtues, was stifled in the heart of degraded and degraded man. The germ of these virtues could not develop in the bosom of ignorance and barbarous prejudice which for centuries had covered this unfortunate island with its dismal veil. From the bosom of our immortal revolution springs a spark of light. Its brightness spread over the darkness which surrounded us like a beneficent meteor which usually precedes great events. He suddenly caused a salutary commotion to burst forth. Love of country and of liberty awoke the man from his slumber. And in the midst of battles and in the bosom of storms, independence was born. Yo, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. You mean to tell me these the dudes that came from slavery and they dropping they dropping this articulate they dropping this articulate language up on the podium? What? <laughs> yo, yo, yo! Black men don't be talking like this in the modern day, bro. What happened? What happened? You know what I'm saying? Black men was really getting to it. Black men was really talking like men back in the days, bro. Do you hear this poetry that my man is dropping up on the stage, man? Let's get back into let's get back into the speech, man. Let's get back into the speech about Ivasti, man. He he talking right now. He preaching, man. He Pass the collection plate around, man. Pass the collection plate around, man. A black man open a speech like that, you gotta drop a hundred dollars in the collection plate, man. Let's get back into it. This precious good made the Haitian nation take a great step 
towards its regeneration, but we were still far from enjoying the advantages of ancient civilized nations, of stable government, institutions, and laws, which are always the fruit of knowledge, experience, and time. By independence, we have conquered our rights. We have purged the soil of Haiti. Stained for centuries with poisonous breath of our implacable enemies, we have driven them out of our presence and we have shaken off their yoke forever. They carried away in their flight the feeling of their impotent rage, the intimate conviction of our strength and our value, but they left us a disastrous heritage, the dissolute morals, the passions and the vices which everywhere accompany their steps. Like other peoples, our early years were strewn with errors and troubles. Like them, we have experienced the vicissitudes which are inseparable from revolution. The foundation of the monarchy reopened our hearts to hope and presaged to the Haitians new and more glorious destinies. In giving you this rapid sketch of the past, I wanted to make you more aware of our present situation. By putting the objects of comparison before your eyes, you will see how our lot has changed, how it has improved. You will see that they are our hopes. The experiences of the past is the best lesson for the future. By the foundation of the monarchy, we have had a stable, just, and paternal government. The most precious good that the divinity can give to man. From our rise to power, it was our first thoughts to realize my projects of reform and my views of public utility. I wanted to highlight the Haitian name with brilliance to make its character and its dignity respected. With the help of the Almighty, I succeeded in giving it institutions and a complete code of laws which composed the Haitian legislation. This was not enough. I did even more. After having laid down precepts for you, I preached the example to you and I was the first to give it to you. I revived the genius of the Haitian people giving them a new impetus towards great things. I discern, distinguish, and rewarded merit and virtue and services returned to the fatherland, either in the military career or in the civilian life. The sciences and the fine arts, talents in all kinds, national industry, have received the encouragement and enjoyed the special protection of the government. The happiest successes have smiled on my efforts. This people, brave and generous, endowed with all the gifts of nature, seconded my hopes. The army is disciplined. It is maintained on a respectable footing. Our finances are in a flourishing state. Our savings have been accumulated by wise economy. Now, time out. What did I say? What the, I mean, what the hell did I say? What the hell did I say? What the hell did I say? I said the years after the revolution between 1806, 1820, when Christoph was alive up until 1825. Listen, Haiti was at the fucking top of the map, bro. Haiti was at the top of the map. Black men in Haiti was literally the richest, most powerful, successful black men walking the face of the earth during that time. And they won't ever tell you that in historical documents, in historical text. They don't want you getting that inspiration. Go to the my play section and go... The most powerful black man of the last 500 years, check that out. If you're a black man especially, but whoever you are, if you're a student of history, go check that out, man. Go check that out. Now let's get back into it, man. Let's jump right back into it. Most governments are burdened with debts, and I have the satisfaction of accounting to you that we owe nothing to anyone. Now time out, time out. I'm sorry I keep stopping in between the article, but bro, after reading that, I damn near... I damn near got tears in front of my eyes, man. I damn near got tears, tears coming out my damn eyes, bro. Seriously, man. Seriously, man. Especially thinking about, like I said, 1825, five years after Christoph died. Christoph died in 1820. And then once the mulatto boys got into power, man, the sons of the French, once they got into power and they, they send us into a, a debt that we ended up paying off for over 100 years. We paid the debt to the former slave owners. It was like $20 billion. And, I'm, and, and listen to this speech right now in 1814 by the king's right hand man. He said most governments are burdened with debt. And I'm happy to tell you that we owe nothing to anyone. And look where we are today, man. Look where we are today. Do you see the amount of passion and nationalism that is within the speeches of these men? Where did that go, man? Where did that go? I got to ask my people, where did that go? Where did that? I mean, I have it. I have it. Trust me. The same fire that's burning in these men's speeches. I got that burning in my heart. But sometimes I feel like I'm alone. Our people don't got that same fire, man. Y'all don't got that same fire no more, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all following Jesus now, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't got that same fire for the homeland no more, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all waiting on the kingdom of heaven, man. It changed, man. It changed. Things change, man. They change. They change, man. But anyways, let's get back into it, man. Let's get back into it. Most governments are burdened with debts, and I have the satisfaction of accounting to you that we owe nothing to anyone. Our resources increase. National industry increase and improves. Order and tranquility reign in our provinces. Immense quantities of territorial foodstuffs piled up in our warehouses, the abundance of provisions and grain of all kinds, the great number of cattle which cover our countryside are the unequivocal proofs of the prosperity of agriculture, of wealth and happiness of the country dwellers. Religion has resumed its empire. The bonds of marriage are revered. Manners are policed. Enlightenment is spread and the nation is advancing with great strides to the highest degree of civilization. Come then now, 
proud and proud men, detractors of our species, come and contemplate the happiness of the Haitians, come and see a free people who govern themselves by institutions and laws, giving themselves up entirely to the practice of social virtue. Come and convince yourselves of our progress in the sciences and the arts. Bow de Saint-Venant, de Lozier, and your ilk, who arrogate to yourselves an alleged superiority over our species. Come and convince yourselves of our prosperity and recognize before the God of nature, which you have outraged the monstrosity of your system and the falsity of your opinions. Now, time out, time out, time out, time out. For those of y'all who checked out my video that I did, my playlist, who I did called the Memoirs of the Haitian Revolution, written by Baron de Vasti, the man who's giving this speech right now, I'll say this, man. Baron de Vasti, I'm reading this speech, and he's popping he's popping his shit right now. And that last little sentence where he said, Bar de Sevena, de Lozier, and your ilk, who arrogate to yourselves and alleged superiority over our species, come and convince yourselves of our prosperity. Man, he's popping his shit. You know who he's talking to? He's talking to them white boys in France. He's saying, oh, oh, yeah, y'all thought, uh, thought y'all was the shit? Y'all thought y'all, yeah, come check us out now. Come see how we living now, pimp. Come see how we living now, G. Yeah, come through. Come through. Even in the memoir, Bound if I see was always popping shit at somebody. He was always popping shit. Like he would be like, he would be telling you the story, and then he would be like, oh yeah, such and such, such and such. Yeah, fuck you, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Keep in mind, like I said, this is my favorite mulatto right here. Bao Devasti, he was always popping shit at somebody. I'm telling you, it was like a diss track on every page of the memoir, bro. He would be telling you the story. He was like, okay, bet. So we was on a battlefield, right? You know what I'm saying? Toussaint, man, the legendary Toussaint. He was that guy. But man, there was them other dudes, Colin Bell and Millicent. Fuck them niggas. You know what I'm saying? Bitch ass niggas. Them niggas try to take us out, man. Fuck them niggas. But then <laughs> and then he come back like, oh yeah. And then Christoph, yeah. And then Christoph was on the battlefield, man. Christoph that dude. You know what I'm saying? Christoph was that dude. But then then you had them other dudes, Petro. You know what I'm saying? Man, fuck that nigga Petro. And then yeah. <laughs> He was always popping shit. So even in the independent speech, I don't even know who that guy is. I don't know who the heck he's even talking about. The dude named um Baudet Sevenin and Delosier. I don't even know who them dudes are. I don't know if they were some French politicians, some French, uh, some dudes who own plantations from back in the day. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But Baudet Vasti, he's popping his shit. You know what I'm saying? He's popping his shit. He told him, nigga, fuck you, nigga, come see how we living now. You know what I'm saying? We doing our thing now. You know what I'm saying? You thought we, yeah, you thought we wasn't gonna have nothing. Yeah, yeah, we winning now. And yeah, they were winning. They were winning. Like I said. King Henry Christoph, richest black man on the face of the earth during that time. And this was his right hand man. So you know, you know the right hand man's was getting money too, man. You know, you know, you know the right hand man's was getting money too, man. But let's jump back into the article, man. Let's jump back into the article. It goes on to continue. Philanthropists of all countries who have embraced our cause, which is that of nature and truth. We are far from confusing you with our enemies. We preserve to you the feelings of gratitude and the liveliest gratitude, immortal Gregoire. Wilberforce and all of you generous men continue by your writings to propagate the lights and to operate the great work of the regeneration of the human species. We have given our protection and we will indiscriminately welcome all honest traders legally dispatched for Haiti who come to establish commercial relations with us. Strong on our own, we only know as enemies those who come forward with hostile intentions and arms in hand. I come, the dignitaries, to enumerate you, the present state of the kingdom. You have seen the presentation of our work, and you must have foreseen in the depths of your hearts those which still remain for us to do. It is to you who approach, more particularly my person, who know my intentions, my liberal views, and the purity of my sentiments for the happiness of the people. It is up to you to continue to assist me with the same zeal. Encourage, enlighten, instruct your fellow citizens on their true interests. Give them examples which can only inspire them with virtuous sentiments. Do not fear the ingratitude of your contemporaries. Do good with perseverance. Your name and the memory of your benefit will pass on to grateful posterity. Enter only to cement the independence of the kingdom, to perpetuate our institutions and our laws. We need constancy, morals, and virtues, the only lasting basis of the happiness and the happiness of the people. For me, happy and satisfied to see the happiness of my people. My paternal heart cannot enjoy a sweeter reward. I forget my pains and my labors since they have contributed to the salvation of all. This speech ended with the sound of applause and cries of Vive le roi, long live the king. Now, we got another speech. Damn, I don't want this video to be too long, man. We got another speech. This is coming from another black man that I never heard of. This is coming from another man that I never heard of. Man, who are these dudes, man? We got so many ancestors that just buried in history books we don't know about. Then, the Comte de Thierry Rouge came forward and addressed Her Majesty the Queen with the following speech. Mrs. The dignitaries, the faithful officers of the king, our most august and most precious, gracious, sovereign, your beloved spouse, appear before your majesty with that profound respect, that attachment which the highest virtues inspires when it is joined to the brilliance of the diadem. It is to render homage to your virtues that we come to deposit at your feet the tribute of our wishes and the expression of all the sentiments of our hearts. We pray, great queen, the almighty to shower you with his dearest favors and his most wearable gifts 
to preserve your days for our beloved king, for your dear son, our lovable Prince Royal, the hope of our country, and for your interesting children. We also pray your majesty to always be our August protector and to always count on our zeal, our attachment, and our unalterable fidelity. The queen replied to the speech of the dignitaries through the organ of the Mao de Chalier, secretary of his majesty's commandants in these terms. Okay, so this is this is what the queen of Haiti said, you know what I'm saying? My Louis Quavi died, you know what I'm saying? Big, you know what I'm saying? Big boss, you know what I'm saying? Big boss, you know what I'm saying? Her pops was a boss. Her pops was a businessman that owned one of the biggest hotels in all of the Caribbean. And he was, he was a black, he was a free black man. So I'm assuming he was like most likely the son of a Frenchman or he was somehow, I don't know how. I don't know how it happened, but I don't know how it happened, but Queen Maya Luis Quavi died. Her father was a businessman, a black businessman on the island of Hispaniola in the late 1790s. A lot of people don't know before the revolution popped off, there was a small black aristocracy on the colony. Now, it was very small. It was probably about 700 people, you know, at most out of the goddamn 500,000 black people on the uh, on the entire island. Right. It was about 700 black people that somehow managed to finesse themselves into a situation where they were actually having freedoms and actually you know doing big things on the, on the colony having like connections and all that so i don't know how they pulled it off yeah i don't know man i wasn't there but her father was part of that small black aristocracy and he owned a major hotel in the colony one of the biggest hotels one of the most successful hotels yeah she was the daughter of a black businessman and she ended up marrying the king of haiti so the queen of haiti always lived a magnificent life she died extremely wealthy extremely rich in italy you know what i'm saying just always man listen very blessed black woman of her time right imagine being a black woman during the late 1700s and having that quality of life having that standard of living so very blessed woman and we're gonna go into her speech this is what she replied to the the royal dignitaries right the queen of haiti speech let's get into it the article says the speech was drowned out by applause and cries of vive la reine which is long live the queen damn damn they didn't even put the speech in the goddamn in the article because y'all was shouting and screaming and, and couldn't be quiet Ah, damn. The ancestors from back in 1814 was wilding, man. Damn. So we don't even got the speech on deck because they couldn't shut up. <laughs> damn. Ah. We literally got like, it's so rare to get something on record for the queen. Like we don't have any written like accounts for her, like anything she said. We got like one letter that she wrote. We got like one letter that I don't even think she wrote it. I think her daughter wrote it. I don't even think we got any articles for the queen, man. That's so messed up, bro. Ah, anyways. Let's get into it, man. Let's continue. The article goes on to say, we believe to please our readers by transcribing here the speech which these foreigners gave. Okay, so, whoa, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. We had some foreigners. We had some white boys up in here, man. <laughs> the white boys put up to the festivities. They said it was an Englishman. It was Englishmen, Americans, Swedes, and Spaniards that addressed speeches to the king. Okay, this is, uh, let's see what the white boys say man let's see what the white boys say apparently these were some solid white boys if they was invited to the festivities man so hey let's get into it sir at the beginning of a new year we have the honor to approach your majesty to present our humble respects to you to congratulate you on the happy ending of the one that has just passed and to express to you our sincere wishes so that your majesty the queen the royal family may enjoy perfect health in order to see the renewal of the day which we celebrate oft repeated and we earnestly wish that the culture and commerce of the kingdom of haiti under the auspices of your majesty be ever flourishing the success which being the basis of the happiness of your people and that of the foreigners who have the honor to trade in your kingdom oh okay so i get it i get it these was the these was the merchants these was the you know what i'm saying these was the dudes coming through the customers you know what i'm saying these was the dudes that you know the reliable customers you know what i'm saying yeah 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 because you know like i said we was the plug what I tell you, we was the plug. Yeah, we was the plug. So yeah, they had to keep coming to the plug to get what they needed because it was the richest colony, the most productive colony on the planet. So yeah, so these was the merchants and the captains and things like that. Okay, that makes sense. I was like, who invited the white boys? Okay, but these was the white boys who was getting money with. Right, right, all right, bet, bet, it makes sense. All right, let's continue. Christoph replied, I receive with pleasure, gentlemen, your compliments on this day for me and my family. Agriculture and commerce are intimately linked in our relations. The success of one depends on that of the other. I am convinced of this great truth. The prosperity of the cultures in my kingdom will always fix my solitude. It's yours, gentlemen, by your foreign relations to encourage your compatriots to undertake with Haiti a lucrative trade, which assures you of great advantages. They will find there, like you, the same profits, the same safety for their persons and their properties. Damn, time out. Yeah. And that's it, man. That's all that Christoph said to him, man. Christoph's talking like a mob boss. You know what I'm saying? Christoph's talking like a boss, man. Yo, black man was really getting to it, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, black man, walk with your head up high. 
like King Henry Kristoff would have done, man. Why would your head up high and hold your nuts, man? Yeah. Not literally hold your nuts, but when I say hold your nuts, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Pop your shit. You know what I'm saying? Pop your shit, bro. Yeah. Let's continue. The article goes on to say, the ceremony over, the king mounted his horse. The queen, the prince royal, and the princesses went up in a convoy. Now, time out, man. Time out. The ceremony over, Kristoff hopped on, hopped on a horse, man. Hopped on a horse, why did it? And then... His family, you know what I'm saying, they was up in the, the royal convoy, you know what I'm saying? But he just ride through the city on a horse. I'm telling you, bro, bro, we got to go back to them old days, man. We missed out on some good times, man. Back when black men was riding through horses with the swords on our hips, man. Man, we missed out on some fly shit, man. Let's continue. After mass, their majesties returned to the palace in the same order as they left. Splendid tables were served for the different orders of the state. During the meal, the liveliest joy broke out at dessert. Patriotic healths were carried and drowned out by loud cheers, music, fanfares, and the sound of cannon. In the evening, a magnificent fireworks display, comedy, and a grand ball ended the first day of the celebration of our immortal independence. The next day, the celebration continued with the greatest... I don't even know what that word is, man. I'm going to just say with the greatest joy. Soldiers, bourgeois, and farmers gathered in the squares of the palace where they gave themselves up to the transport of the liveliest joy, dancing and singing to the noise of a thousand different instruments. His majesty, accompanied by the royal family, surrounded by the most beautiful and brilliant court that is possible to see, came to the terraces of the palace to contemplate this joyful and touching scene. At the appearances of their majesties and the royal family, the people burst out with the liveliest joy. The joy was at its height. Shouts a thousand times repeated of long live the king, long live the queen, long live the royal family resounded from all sides. Like the presence of a good father in the midst of his children causes the sweetest sentiments of nature, love, gratitude, the happiness they enjoy inspires in them the sweetest intoxication. They make it burst with transports of joy to the envy of each other. Such was the impression felt by the people at the sight of the beloved king of a common father of Haitians. It is impossible to describe the spirit of enthusiasm, this frank, lively, and pure joy which agitated everyone. What eloquent pen could depict the sentiments of gratitude and gratitude which animated them? What loud enough voice could make heard the acclamations and the wishes that the people addressed to the Almighty in thanksgiving for preserving such a good king? O oh, you who were present at this spectacle, image of the public felicity, you who experienced these delicious feelings, tell me what you felt. Tell me how I can express the enthusiasm and zeal that set you ablaze, those sweet emotions of friendship, love, gratitude, which agitated your hearts in turn. Tell me how should I express myself to paint these sentiments. Alas, you, that you know that it is easier to think of them than to be able to describe them. And you, great king, who dedicate your happiness to bringing happiness to your people. What sweet emotion of your paternal heart must have experienced at this moment, contemplating this feast of this great family, this beautiful and touching harmony, this tender union which brought the Haitians, or rather your children, to hurry to embrace each other, and in the transports of the sweetest intoxication, to resound the airs and the echoes of the mountains and the valleys of Sanssouci, from the sound of your name and their wishes, carried by gratitude and thankfulness, rise to the ethereal vault, to invoke the Almighty to preserve the precious days of your majesty, on which their happiness and bliss depend, undoubtedly, at this touching picture, at these transports, at these wishes that the Haitians, your majesty's paternal entrails were moved. Your tender soul experienced all the delicious feelings that the presence always causes in it of a people who are of his greatest affections. In the evening, their majesties attended the opera. After the opera, there was a grand ball at the palace. The ball was opened by the queen who danced a minuet with Monseigneur Prince Jean, the Grand Admiral of Haiti. Dances and diversions took place without interruption until daylight. God damn, bro. They've been partying for like three days straight, bro. They now, now they just said they, 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 what? Oh, time out, time out, time out. So in the morning, this is the second day they was partying. So in the morning, the king came out. Everybody was invited to the palace. Yeah, Kristoff was such a boss, man. It would be times where, listen, every, everybody in the capital can just come to the palace, bro. Everybody can just come kick it at the palace. The citizens can like come to the palace, bro, for real. It was lit like that. And then I guess, you know, the king came out to the terrace. And then it was like a big festivity at the palace. And then they went to the opera. And then they partied all night, danced all night until the next morning. God damn, bro. Man, listen, y'all be talking about y'all be partying. Y'all be turning up. Y'all don't be turning up like our forefathers be turning up. When the last time you partied for three days straight, man? Tell me when. Let's get back into it, man. Everything contributed to the beauty of the party. Although in the rainy season, it had the most beautiful weather in the world. The roads were superb and covered with elegant carriages and richly steered horses and with the great number of people who came from all parts to the capital to attend the fete, the party. Fete means party in French, whatever. The court was as numerous as it was brilliant and offered everything that can flatter the sight as much by the richness and by the elegance of the costumes 
in all countries it almost always happens in the great public festivals some unfortunate accident by the crowd which goes there and by the effervescence caused by the spiritous liquors but thankfully nothing like that happened everything went the best with the world and the pleasures were not interrupted for a single moment the 11th anniversary of our independence has just begun under the happiest auspices inner peace the prosperity of the crops and commerce good order re-established in all branches of the administration of the kingdom everything prospers under a king who devotes himself entirely to making us happy doesn't everything bode us for happy days haitians make wishes make this happy anniversary return so favorably every year and may its duration be eternal make wishes that the divinity preserve the precious days of our beloved king for a great number of years that he may accomplish his great thoughts consolidate independence on the unshakable foundations of the monarchy and at the remembrance of the immortal benefits which marked his reign only by name and that's it man that's the entire article i did not expect the video to be this long um uh, almost an hour long i mean that's kind of uh that's kind of crazy i didn't expect that but yeah man um uh, i think it was i think it was uh, appropriate for many reasons i think because haitian independence they just passed a couple weeks ago and i'm gonna keep it a stack i'm gonna keep it 100 with you like i said before during this video if christoph came back if christoph came back from the dead and he's seen what was going on right now so many of y'all would be sent to the afterlife it wouldn't even be funny man if y'all seen if christoph came back and seen what y'all did well to be honest man where christoph was was in power it was the northern section really the northern and the the central the and a little bit of the western part the northwestern part that's really where his base of power was currently in haiti right now in 2023 a lot of where the gang activity is going on is really in the capital of port-au-prince you know a little towards the you know the western part of the island you know towards down south so it's not really up north like that so where christoph had his kingdom at you know what i'm saying it ain't really going crazy it ain't really going too crazy up north like that it's really concentrated in the capital in port au prince and christoph had no control over port au prince during his time in power right that was really under the control of the mulatto boys so to be honest christoph would still you know christoph would still be extremely pissed off you know what i'm saying he would still be extremely pissed off at us for a variety of reasons regardless of that but i'm just saying but yeah man it's very sad it's very sad i'm gonna say we fell off hey we fell off in a major way man we fell off in a major way but Listen, the only way we could get back up top is by knowing where you came from, right? The majority of y'all, and when I say y'all, I mean Haitians, and I guess I could count nine Haitians as well. Y'all don't know that y'all actually had an era of prosperity, of everything just, everything was beautiful and magnificent. You don't know that. The only thing that you know was you've always been in the struggle. You've always been at the bottom. You've always been in the dirt, but that's not the case. That's not accurate. That's not accurate, right? If you always assume that you've been at the bottom, then you're never going to really be motivated to get back at the top. But if you knew one day that you were actually at the top, then you would want to get back to the top. So that's why I kind of give these stories out, man. I kind of give these stories as well as for black men across the world to gather inspiration from it. Because at the end of the day, this was black men. You know what I'm saying? This was black men doing this at the end of the day, regardless of the, of the cultural background. It was black men. So any black man across the world can take inspiration from these stories you know that's why i put it out so yeah man if you want to learn more about king henry christoph go to my playlist section i keep advertising it you know what i'm saying go to my playlist section the most powerful black man of the last 500 years then after that go to the other playlist called history of haiti then after that go to the other playlist called memoirs of the Haitian revolution written by bowed by now that playlist is not done i still gotta upload more parts you know uh i've been slacking on that i haven't updated that series in about a month I gotta, you know what I'm saying? I gotta stop playing, man. I gotta stop playing. But yeah, man, I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope y'all enjoyed it. How the King of Haiti celebrated Haitian Independence Day in the year 1814. I think, I think it was dope. I think it was a dope article, legendary article. Why don't they teach us this in school? I don't know. Things we'll never know. But it is what it is, man. It's your boy Nefakari Desaline back in the building. Yes, indeed. And I'm gone. Peace. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description. Support your boy. I just gave y'all. I just gave y'all some legendary material, man. Support your boy. Drop some love in the cash app, man. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, sh now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shoot. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Pay for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a 
Young Money Congo, never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and it can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play all my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so elite. Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.